you want to make a 3D game and you want to work on like a first person shooter or an RPG or God forbid an MMO. But let me ask you this question. Do you even know how to roll a ball? Yeah, I didn't think so. But you came to the right place. Because by the end of this video, not only will you know how to roll a ball, you'll be rolling your balls all across town. You'll be impressing your friends. They'll want to know how to roll their balls. And guess what? You're going to know how to show them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this ball rolling. <laughs> Please keep watching. All right. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up a empty Unity 3D project like I have here. It's pretty similar to the 2D one, except you can move in 3D. Ooh. And the first thing we want to do is actually establish some sort of ground that we can kind of base everything off of. Give our player like a floor to stand on. So we'll right click in the hierarchy here and go down to 3D object. And I'm just going to select a plane. And I'll rename this to floor and right click on the transform and select the reset option just so it zeroes out the position. We can then grab on this green axis here, which is the Y axis and drag it down. Or you could set the Y axis in the inspector to something like negative five. It doesn't really matter just as long as it's below zero for now. We can now focus on the star player of this tutorial, the ball. So let's right click on the hierarchy again and go down to 3D object and we'll select the sphere this time. And we could rename the sphere to ball and like before, we'll right click on the transform and reset it. Without going too much into how the graphics of a 3D game works, gray objects are boring. I think we can all admit that. So what I'm gonna do is right click on my assets folder and import two textures that I downloaded for free on the internet. They're just PNG files. Google like free textures of whatever you want. So I'm gonna right click on assets and go to import new asset and import this basketball and court texture, which again are just two images. And now that they're in our project, we can right click on assets again and go to create material. And I'll call this basketball and I'll create another material and call this court. And so we'll do the basketball first. I'll click on the basketball material and next to Albedo, you'll see this gray box on the left-hand side. We can actually just drag our image into this box and you'll see it highlight. And when we let go, then it already maps itself to this material. So now we can grab this basketball material and just drag it onto the ball. And there you go. Now the ball looks like a basketball. And we can do the same exact thing with the court. So we can select our court material, click and drag the court texture next to the albedo mapping, which is what we'll just stick to for now. And again, you can now click your material and drag it onto your floor. And at this point, if you play the game, nothing's actually gonna happen. There's no rigid body on our game objects, so gravity's not at play here. They're just static game objects. But you will notice that there's actually a shadow over here that's being cast by the direct light. So if you're curious how that's working in a 3D environment, by default, Unity gives you a main camera and a directional light. And so if you double click on the directional light, you can kind of see its settings. And if you wanted to, you could rotate on some of these axes. And as you see in the game scene now, the shadows are kind of changing. But I'll just leave everything as default for the sake of this video. All right, so like I just said, we need to get the ball to actually respond to gravity. That's the first step. So let's go ahead and select our ball. And then we'll click on Add Component. And we'll type in rigid body and select rigid body and not rigid body 2D, just the regular rigid body. And so now, just like that, for doing all that hard work of adding a component, your ball will now fall to the ground because of gravity. Amazing. All right, so now we're getting to the fun part. Let's go ahead and actually make our ball roll around. Very exciting. Let's right click on our assets folder and go to create C sharp script. And I'm just gonna call this player controller. And then we'll click and drag the script onto the ball object and we'll double click it and open it up. So this script's gonna be very easy. Let's go ahead and start by defining the variables we're gonna need. The first thing we wanna do is make a reference to the rigid body we just added to our ball. So we'll say public rigid body RB. If you come back to the Unity editor, you'll notice the player controller script now has this field here for RB. And you can actually click and drag on the rigid body component into this field and make the reference that way. Another thing you could do is replace this start method with awake which gets called while the game is loading as opposed to when the game starts. And you could simply just say RB equals get component of type rigid body. And this will go ahead and fetch the reference for you. Both ways work. It's just a matter of preference. Next thing we're going to need is a move speed that we can tweak the value of. So we'll say public float move speed. And for convenience, I'm just going to default the value of this to 10. So now we have this update method. Whatever codes in this update method gets called every single frame, but this can actually vary from computer to computer depending on how fast your frame rate is. So there's actually another type of update method called fixed update, which gets called at a consistent rate. And fixed updates is the better thing to use when you're dealing with physics-based movement like we are here. So what we'll actually say is void fixed update down here. And this is where we want to handle movement. 
But since update gets called every frame, this is actually a good place to handle input processing. If this is entirely new to you, this is basically just what you need to know for now. Don't get too worried about it. And with that said, let's go ahead and make the two remaining methods we'll need for this script. So the first one's going to be a private void process inputs method. And this is gonna handle exactly what it sounds like. We're just gonna be listening to see if a player is pressing any inputs. And so let's actually go back up to the top of the script and create two more variables. We'll say private float x input and private float y input. With these variables created down in the process inputs method, we'll simply say x input is equal to input.getaccess. And then in string quotations, make sure the spelling here and casing is accurate. We'll say horizontal. And now we need to do the same for y inputs. So we could say y input is equal to input.getaccess. And again, in string quotations, and make sure your casing and spelling is correct, we'll type in vertical. In our update method, we can now call process inputs. And now all that's left is to actually move when we're pressing an input. So we'll create one more method down here called private void move. And this one's easy. We'll simply say rb.addForce. We'll open the parentheses and say new vector three. And for the x value, what we wanna do is our x input. For y, it's a little bit different though. In a 2D game, y would make sense here. But in a 3D game, adding to the y value is kind of like jumping, which we don't wanna do if we're moving forward. We actually wanna increase that in the z-axis. So we'll say zero for the y, and we'll pass the y input into the z-axis which I agree is a little strange. So what we can actually do is just rename this to Z input, since that's more fitting, but it's not entirely necessary. And then what we really wanna do is just multiply this new vector three by our move speed. We can then call this move function in fixed update. Back in the editor, our move speed should be defaulted to a value of 10, but feel free to play with this value as you see fit. And when we play the game, we can now roll our ball around on the screen. Woo! Ooh, you did it, but we can't really see. So let's fix the camera really quick. We need to make another script for this. So we'll right click on our assets and go to create C sharp script and I'll call this camera controller. And then just like before, we can click and drag on our camera controller onto the main camera and double click it to open it up. The first thing we wanna do is actually get rid of our start method cause we don't need it. We need to determine a target for our camera to follow and we know it's gonna be our ball or our player. So how we can reference that is make a reference to a game object. So we can say public, game object, and we'll call this the target. And then depending on how you want your camera set up, we basically want to set up some offset variables that we can tweak so we can play around with the distance our camera's at from our player or our target. And to do that, we can just simply say public float, and then I'm gonna call this x offset. And if you wanna have multiple variables declared on the same line, you could just have a comma here since it's the same type. And we'll call this y offset and z offset. Down in our update method, we just wanna say our transform.position, which is the camera's position, is equal to target.transform.position, which in this case would be the ball's position, plus a new vector three of our x offset, our y offset, and our z offset. And then finally, we just want the camera to look at our target. So we'll say transform.lookat, which is a handy little function, and we'll say target.transform.position, which is the ball's position in this case. And that's it. So then back in our editor here on the main camera, on the camera controller script, we have this target field, so we'll drag our ball into that. And then feel free to play around with these variables to see how the camera looks. But for me, what I'm gonna do as I've played with this before is set the Y offset to four and the Z offset to negative four. And so now when we play the game, we have a camera that's looking down on our player and we can move around and it feels pretty convenient. At this point, there's a lot of different ways you can go with how you want the gameplay to work. But one thing I wanna do is make it so when you fall off the edge, it resets the game. And this one's also a pretty quick script. So we'll right click on assets and create a new c -sharp script. And I'll call this reset. So at this point, you could create something like a game manager object if you're familiar with that or if you've seen that in other tutorials. But for the sake of simplicity in this tutorial, I'm just gonna use the ball for this script. So I'll click and drag reset onto the ball and we'll open up the script. Just like before, we don't need the start method for this one, so we can get rid of it. And this one's really quick. At the top of the script, let's add a using statement because how I'm gonna handle the reset is just by reloading the scene. So we'll say using unityengine.scenemanagement. We then need a public float threshold variable, and I'll default this to negative 50. And because the script's attached to the ball game object, all we need to say is if our transform.position.y value is less than our threshold, 
then we simply want to say scene manager dot load scene. Load scene will basically, you know, change to whatever scene we designate. But in this case, we want to load the one we're actively on. So we'll say scene manager dot get active scene. And then we'll just get the build index from our active scene. All right, so now if we fall off the side, once we hit that negative 50 mark, you can set it to whatever you want. You'll notice it resets the exact same level and we can try again. And so now that we have the basic foundation of our movement set up, what I'm gonna do is kind of monkey ball style where you just have to get to the goal and move on to the next level. So to make the level somewhat more interesting, it's kind of boring, I'm just gonna expand out the Z axis of my floor from one to 10, <laughs> which is a lot more interesting, I know. And I'll right click in the hierarchy and create a cube. Using the move tools, I'm just gonna position it somewhere near the end of the level. And on the cube's box collider, I'm gonna set is trigger equal to true. I'll now create a final C sharp script and call this goal. And we can click goal and drag it onto the cube. We could rename the cube goal. And let's open up the script. This is gonna be actually very similar to the reset, perhaps even easier. We can actually get rid of start and update because we don't need them. At the top, we can say using unity engine that scene management. And now what we want to say is void on trigger enter. And we simply want to check to see if we're colliding with the player. So in order to do that, I'm going to see if the other game object has the player controller script. So I'm actually going to make a reference to a player controller and I'll call this component. And we'll set that equal to the other dot game object dot get component of type player controller. And now we can simply say if our component does not equal null, meaning it found one. We can say scene manager dot load scene. And then just like before, we can say scene manager dot get active scene dot build index plus one. So instead of playing the scene we're on now, we're just gonna move to the next scene. And if you're curious how to, you can make a new scene, you simply just need to go to file, new scene. And I'll save this as level two. And while I'm on level two, I can go to file, build settings and add open scenes. And you'll see that it has sample scene and level two with the corresponding build indexes. So if we were on sample scene and we collide with that cube, we'll add plus one to the build index and get one, which is level two. And that's how that works. So obviously I didn't build out level two, so it's gonna be a little boring here, but as our player collides with the goal, we'll notice that it actually moves on to the next level. And so I'll leave that to you to build out the additional levels and to make this game somewhat more interesting. But at this point you have some building blocks to actually build an interesting 3D game. And you can get this set up in just a few minutes. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you can roll a ball, you can yeah. do anything.